All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night here from Tokyo, Japan. Hope you all are having a good day wherever you may be. Um, yeah, Bitcoin is moving on up back up to the mid 50K range, about $55,000 and some change. Right now, $55,300. So things looking pretty good for Bitcoin here. Um, despite that, though, um, today's subject is a little bit interesting, right? We have the Bitcoin bull himself, uh, Tesla's own Elon Musk, right? Having Tesla sell some Bitcoin. Now, some people are, you know, talking about Elon Musk selling his Bitcoin. Not exactly the case, but we'll talk about um, how he, why he Tesla uh, Bitcoin and kind of how that may affect Bitcoin. Same time though, Perma Bear. So we have the Perma Bull, Elon Musk, or he seemed to be the Perma Bull. Now we have the Perma Bear, uh, JP Morgan's own Jamie Dimon, right? Looking to allow JP Morgan clients to invest in Bitcoin. What kind of world are we living in? This is madness, I say. So uh, we want to look at this today and say, is this bullish or is this bearish for Bitcoin? Does Bitcoin care, <laughs> right? Uh, maybe Bitcoin doesn't give a shit and says, uh, who cares? I'm going up, right? So we'll take a look at that today uh, along with the Bitcoin price and, and all that jazz. Also some other news, which is pretty interesting coming up here for the NFL draft, including Bitcoin. Uh, so Bitcoin's getting involved in everything, getting involved with geopolitics, getting involved with the uh, NFL draft, uh, getting involved with uh, even JP Morgan. So uh, pretty interesting. And um, yeah, so it's a good way to start our week here uh, with the good crypto news. Um, but of course, we got to start with our most important segment of the show, right? Our memes of the day. We got a whole lot of memes today. So the retail market is looking good. But before we do, Let's jump into the comments and see what everybody is up to this morning. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, Pepsa says, damn, did Elon Musk lose that much cash from uh, that Tesla crash to need to sell his Bitcoin? Not exactly. I like James's comment, though. Tesla has paper hands. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Let's see. Uh, Uni is going up. That is good. What else we got in the house? We got Wade jumping in the house. Good morning to you. Uh, Marcello with a good question here says, Charlie, what is a better buy at the moment, serum or Celsius? Thanks in advance. I would say they're both comparable, right? The cell is a little bit cheaper in price uh, compared to at this very moment. Uh, serum right, had pumped up right after Moon Gang. So we were talking about it on Moon Gang, being very bullish on Serum. And what happens, it moves about 20% uh, to the upside uh, immediately after our show. It's a good thing. Uh, but I would say both, uh, for slightly different reasons, right, are good buys at the moment. I like both. I have bought both within the last uh, one week, bought more of them. So with Serum, I would say um, you're basically betting on uh, all decentralized services around the Solana platform. So that's probably going to be a lot of things, right? Uh, including uh, various projects, right? So uh, including like Ray and other things. Um, then we look at Celsius and you're looking at more of like a compounding effect, right? Where the Celsius price will go up because of assets under management on the Celsius platform and on the Celsius platform, uh, you can earn interest. So if you can earn sell on sell, right, earn Celsius from holding Celsius on the Celsius platform, that compounding effect can be very serious, right, uh, over uh, the course of a, a few months to a year. So, right, Celsius is going to move up well, and price serum is as well. They both have the potential to do anywhere from a 10 to 20x, in my opinion. Um, so uh, I would say get a little bit of both. Um, but if you want to compound Celsius, if you uh, like the Serum ecosystem and that's something that you really want to bet on, then Serum. But um, both uh, are worth it. So it was a good question, worth paying attention to. <laughs> Bang Rang deleted his comment, but I still have it here on on the uh, on the stream yard. I'll, I, he deleted it, so maybe I, I won't show it. I I thought it was a good comment. 
Uh, good morning to you, Brian. Nice seeing you. Greetings from Scotland from our friend Stevie. Uh, Moon Gang and Breakfast, I like it, appliance guy. Appreciate that. Oh, we got polar bear toenails pumping Bitcoin with the 999 super chat. Appreciate it. Let's take a look here. Oh, wow. We even got, we got uh, <laughs> people on Facebook making comments that are basically shills. The shills are going to Facebook to make a comment. We're getting bullish. But polar bear, polar bear toenails with the 999 super chat saying, I currently own three Ethereum and 51 Uni. Both are pumping right now. With Unis Uniswap V3 coming up, would you recommend uh, moving one of my ETH over to Uni in preparation? I'm a beginner. Thanks. Nope. I would say stay with what you got right now. Um, let me uh, actually let me currently. I'll just do a quick one just because I'm feeling generous today. Um, mm, yeah, actually, you could do that. Why the fuck? Why not? <laughs> so, um, to be honest, Uni will pump up in price. Uh, so will Ethereum. It might be a little bit easier, right? Uh, for Uni to have a little less resistance to the upside. So, yeah, you probably will, um, you know, gain a little, uh, quite a bit more on there. So, um, why not? Um, to be honest, Uni is a bet on Ethereum's ecosystem anyway, and a very close tie to Ethereum. So, uh, you know, if you're bullish on Ethereum, you might as well be bullish on Uni. So, uh, taking that one ETH over there ain't too bad, in my opinion. Tinky Winky saying, Dear Charlie, is Cell still looking at $100 this year? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> let's that be. We'll get into that on Moon Gang. All right, enough with the comments. I think. Oops. <laughs> Daniel says, "Charlie, please do consultations in the bear market." That's a that's a, I don't know. That's a big if, but we will be doing the uh, crypto mindset course uh, from time to time in the bull market, but not every quarter. All right, let's move on. And Aaron Wolf in the house as well. Morning, DGens. DGens unite. All right, let's get going to the memes and see what is going on in meme land. Meme land is the best. All right, not a meme, but good information. And for some reason on Reddit meme pages. So um, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Pretty real. Should probably listen to that. One of the richest people in the world saying this. I would say it's good information. Of course, this guy also says Bitcoin is rat poison and worthless. So no, don't listen to billionaires on everything they say. But this one, I would agree. Um, if you want to work until you die, by all means. But uh, yeah, it's nice to have that passive income. But <laughs> don't take it from me. This is me giving advice to crypto newbies after joining crypto myself four months ago. <laughs> you guys all know I haven't been here for four months, but you know, if that was the case, I would say this would be an applicable meme. Oof. Diversified portfolio of stocks and index funds, right? Like your apples and bananas or all in on the cummies. <laughs> I would not suggest this. And you know, the, uh, Color there is uh, similar, so mm, not so sure about this one. Not so sure about this one. Next one here. <laughs> we have how I try to help my friends stay away from shitcoin like the cummies. Let's take a watch. Oh, he's saved. Oh, back into the shit coins. Can't help them all. Can't help them all. Anyways, you know, he tried. Next one. Oh boy. Doge, Doge buyer, Dogecoin buyer, looking for that moon. Where, when moon? Let's look for it. Oh, oh, I almost got it. Not quite. Eh, eh, oh, come on, why, why, how come? I want that. 
<laughs> yeah. Fleeting. That $1 Dogecoin. Ever fleeting. Again, when moon. When moon, I say. <laughs> Buy Dogecoin, they said. It will be fun, they said. <laughs> now I am poor and on the streets. Missing, missing $64,804 Bitcoin. Have you seen me? If found, contact cultivatecrypto.com. Me before work. Uh, me during work. Tired. Me after work. Me at 1.30 a.m. Watching cryptos. Ooh, yeah, baby. Ooh, yeah. Get that midnight midnight oil burning. It keeps me from checking my block folio every two seconds. When your friend from the stock market joins crypto and celebrates a 3% gain. And we don't do that here. Come on. Keep together. Keep it together. But we do do this here. <laughs> we got Bitcoin and Nano. Go Banano. Uh, I'm not so sure about that one either. But, you know, it is what it is. This one, Solana, lifting my whole portfolio. Me who forgot it's in my bag. Oh, shit. Should have bought more of that. Oof. <laughs> Good old Vitalik Buterin, creator of Ethereum, back in 2014, saying, and now I don't know if this is actually said or if this is put in his mouth, but anyways, uh, I like the quote. Seems seems legit. The internet of money, Bitcoin, should not cost five cents per transaction. It's kind of absurd. <laughs> kind of absurd are those gas fees, Sir Buterin. You were supposed to destroy the financial system, not celebrate when they invested your shit coin. Oof. Why are we talking about this? Well, today's subject, right? This is the six stages of going from denial to acceptance for Sir Jamie Dimon or Diamond, whatever you want to call him. He used to say back in 2015, November 4th, virtual currency will be stopped. Probably saying by the government or something or hacking right next one and from delivering alpha jp morgan ceo jamie Dimon says bitcoin is a fraud that will eventually blow up september 12 2017 what did i do at that time i bought more jamie Dimon says he regrets calling bitcoin a fraud and believes in the technology behind it january 9th 2018 calling a i that was a top signal right to, uh, potentially a top signal. Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is not my cup of tea, even as JP Morgan warmed to crypto November of 2020, right? So not liking it, but accepting it, knowing it's not going away. JP Morgan says investors could make Bitcoin 1% of portfolios February 2021. Starting to get there. Now, April 26, 2021, JP Morgan may offer actively managed Bitcoin fund according to a report. So we'll talk about that today, but oh boy. Yeah, he even said that he'll, he would fire anybody that would be uh, at his, uh, at JP Morgan trying to dabble or trade in cryptocurrency. He used to say he would fire people. Now he's going to offer it to his clients because he cannot deny it anymore. People want it and it's not going away. Yes, Zotrack. Yes. <laughs> JP Morgan is dumb money. That is 100% correct. They may have a lot of money. Doesn't mean that doesn't make them necessarily smart, at least not the people current, currently running the company. I see your bears and I raise you a whale. <laughs> Everything looking bullish so far today. Everything looking bullish. Bitcoin here at $55,050. So let's take a look at that, right? About $54,000 here. If I press refresh, what do we got going on? Yeah, about $55,000 for Bitcoin, right? Not quite at 9,500 cryptocurrencies, over tr $2 trillion in market cap, and just over a $1 trillion in market cap for Bitcoin. So we're back to that area, right? We've just been kind of oscillating between 40, well, the low was 46,000. The previous high was about 64,000. And so we're sitting right in between there now, smack dab in the middle at $55,000. So 
you know, this allows the alts time to breathe and Ethereum getting close to new all, uh, all time highs. Again, we'll take a look at the charts here in a second, but yeah, uh, the top crypto is doing well. Ripple on a pretty decent pump for today. Of the top tens, Ripple is doing the best today. Um, and it is what it is. So let's take a look at the bigger winners here in the top 100. We got Waves, got Dent, Holo, and Phantom, and IOST. Let's take a look at, we'll take a look at those ones because they're over 20%. Oops, did I press too many of these things? Probably. Where we go, Waves first. All right, what do you got for us? Really nice chart compared to dollars, but compared to Bitcoin, not so much. Not even beating its previous highs against Bitcoin. So, um, yeah, I would say, you know, you could probably do decent on this coin in uh, against Bitcoin a little bit, but, you know, nah, I'm not too interested, to be honest. Next one, Dent. Oof, really bad over the bear market. Started to come back. Will it sustain? Who knows? But compared to Bitcoin, still not too much. But if it beats its previous high against Bitcoin, then maybe it's something to consider. But um, yeah, also something that I'm not uh, too keen on or not, you know, jumping all over. Holo, good against Bitcoin. Also getting close to breaking its previous highs against Bitcoin. So let's look at this one on the chart against Bitcoin. Because I think this is actually worth looking at. Uh, and we'll take a look at that here, right here. Uh, we'll look at it compared to Bitcoin. Because that's the what we're looking at. And can we go to the weekly? No, it doesn't have all of its data. What I, what I wanted to see on this was basically... Uh, the previous jump up here against Bitcoin in February of 2019, right? Because this area over here would be interesting to look at how much resistance we have. But basically, it's above this area here, and it's trying to get above this little last peak area here against Bitcoin. So it might have a little bit of resistance against Bitcoin in the short term, but if it does do well along with other alts when Bitcoin's kind of just chopping along, this might be, you know, a possible play. Not saying it's going to be a great play, but possible um, I have not bought any. Phantom, really nice, right? Nice chart. Had been oscillating against Bitcoin and the dollar, made a new high, trying to find support now. Seems like it may have found it uh, against both Bitcoin and the dollar. So pretty decent. IOST, uh, a good pump here. Uh, its previous dollar high was uh, basically similar, so getting towards its all-time highs. But look at that. Not so much against Bitcoin. So, right, as we do this uh, every day on the show here, pretty simple to just kind of look there and say, okay, the dollars look nice, but is it fool's gold? Right, in this case, probably, probably. But it, the one good thing about this is it is making higher uh, uptrend against Bitcoin. So it's making some moves, right? But is it going to make you the most money compared to other cryptocurrencies? Not necessarily, but it, it might make some decent gains. All right, got to take some shills out of the chat. Boom, there we go. Let's see, what is we going to do here? That's annoying. There we go. Yep, we don't, I mean, I, I like DGB. I got some DGB, but we don't shill in the chat. I mean, you could talk about your coins, but don't, you know, just throw in a bunch of emojis just to highlight your coin. Faux pas, but it's all right. I like my DGB. Uh, so that's what's happening with the top coins here, right? With the lower uh, end, right? Not too many cryptocurrencies losing today, right? Some going sideways are not gaining a whole lot, but for the most part in the top 100, we're seeing uh, plenty, plenty of green, right? Uh, let's take a look at what's going on in the 100 to 150 range. All right, Verge, the shitcoin to rule all shitcoins is even up 10% today. Just telling you where we are in this market. Uh, Conflux Network, have not heard of that one before, so we'll take a quick look at that. 
V Thor token, sure. Up 20%, so that's decent. Where else? What else we got here? Any other 20% gainers? Not really. IOTX doing okay. Storm doing okay. <clears throat> Dodo kind of looked like doo doo for a second. Uh, doing okay. Mm, nothing else really in the top 150 that's jumping out. I mean, there's some of them doing all right, but nothing too crazy right now. So we'll just take a look at Conflux and Vthor. So Conflux Network is at a dollar. Congratulations. You are now better than fiat currency. Or at least similar. Look at that. Pretty nice chart compared to Bitcoin as well. So I, I like this structure, right? It pumped when it first came out compared to both Bitcoin and the dollar. Found a low and has made a nice new high and then trying to find support on that. That's a pretty nice chart for a young coin, uh, which came out in November. What is this? Bridging Asian and Western communities and economies to enable secure flow of assets across borders. You can do that with Bitcoin. <laughs> the con uh, flux protocol is scalable. Um, headquartered in China, has expanded in global operations. How is this different from any other cryptocurrency? I don't see it. Not a very good elevator pitch, at least not in this area here. Uh, we'll take a pity look at the website, but the chart looks good. So it's worth you know looking into a little bit. Mm. That's Sequoia Capital is related to it and Huobi as well. And a few universities. So maybe there's something to this. Uh, maybe there's something to it. I don't know. Go take a look if you're interested. Uh, something probably worth jumping on to and taking a look at. The one positive about this thing, right, is that it has not jumped up crazily in market cap. Right, it's probably had a big jump from wherever it was, but uh, it, some of these coins they go up immediately. They're like the top twenty cryptocurrencies in terms of market cap, and then they go crashing down. Uh, some that's what often some of these coins do. Um, so this one's not doing that. So maybe uh, something legitimate there. Uh, Vth or token, not not a nope, not enough against Bitcoin. No thanks. All right, so that's what's happening uh, in the crypto world. So basically, maybe check out that coin and then um yeah just waiting for more gains basically yeah zotrek I, I agree it's nice that normal retail people had this dip opportunity this weekend that is true by that dip and speaking of that right we are neutral we had major fear yesterday Yesterday, I would say, was a very good day to buy. Basically, when we were talking on Moon Gang about uh, the different ecosystem plays, probably a good time to go out there and start betting on the ones that you're most bullish on if or adding to your positions that you currently have, right? If you can. Um, that's what uh, was good yesterday, right? Extreme fear or normal level of fear. Actually, extreme for the bull market. For the bear market, it wasn't an extreme level of fear. Last month and last week, we had a lot of greed that's been kind of taken out of the market with Bitcoin jumping down to 46,000 briefly. And now everybody's kind of just waiting to see what's going on, right? And if we look here at the fear greed index, we did have a pretty big jump to the downside, right? And we're coming back here in the middle ground. I would say... Um, I don't trade on this chart, but this chart has proved over this bull market that actually it is a pretty decent at um, measuring what it's trying to measure. So I, I like looking at it every once in a while. I don't trade on it, but useful to look at from time to time. Let's take a look at Bitcoin and see what's going on here. Naveen Kumar in the house says, when dot pump? Um, soon, soon. More pump to come. <laughs> oh, just some of these comments. All right. So let's take a look at what's going on. So we had this pretty big downtrend, but um, pretty simple, right? What do all of these downtrends have in common? Well, this one and this one look relatively similar in structure. Uh, if you were to just do something really simple, Right. And if you know what a corrective wave, right? So here we have an Elliott correction wave, ABC. 
So in a bull market, we usually get a simple corrective wave, which is usually one to the downside, one to the upside, and another to the downside, right? An A, B, and a C. And you can even, without putting that on there, right? You can see that just with, you know, two red candles, a green candle, and then some more red candles, basically two to the down, one to the up, three to the, four to the down. So that's like a wave one, two, and three, A, B, C, right? See the exact same thing happening here. And we saw a little bit more of a complex one here back at the end of January, right? But basically similar in structure. So that one was finished. This one was finished. This one as well had finished. And it seems like, not calling it, but looking like that downtrend has finished. Now you could go like this and put a trend line across it and argue that, right? We have closed above that trend line, arguable, but that is subjective. So in my opinion, right, we have broken this downtrend or at least are in the process of breaking this downtrend and we have upwards potential. But the question is how high, right? The one negative that we have here is that Bitcoin broke below this previous low where the cycle started. So the cycle made a new low. Now, it doesn't mean we can't break past the high. It would just be a very abnormal cycle. And, you know, you could argue that this was potentially manipulation by somewhere, by a, a place uh, that has a lot of money, kind of like JP Morgan. Now, not saying that they have the opportunity or ability to have that effect on Bitcoin, but, you know, maybe somebody was trying to suppress the price. That's a possibility. Um, but, you know, for right now, what I would focus on for this current cycle, basically until the end of May for Bitcoin in particular, right, would probably be um, to hold below these levels and hold uh, hold below this level of the previous high, hold above this level of the previous low. We may get some sideways chop. If we do break this channel, right, maybe we test that previous high, we fail, we come back down to the middle, then maybe we test, if we test it again, then it has a chance to potentially break out. Or opposite to the downside, right, we test the upside, get rejected, come again and test that low, and then maybe come up to the middle here, get rejected again, test the low again, and then actually make a new low. That is possible as well. So not out of the woods quite yet for Bitcoin, but um, it's showing strength here in the high 40Ks. Um, so things looking okay for Bitcoin right now. And it wants to go above that 20-day moving average. So around $57,000 needs to uh, have a daily close above there to try to test those previous all-time highs until it closes above uh, that $57,000. It's right, just gonna be kind of sitting there for a little bit, but things looking positive for Bitcoin. Let's go and take a look at our friend Ethereum. And yeah, Ethereum very close to new all time highs. Right now, the all time high is 2644 20, or $45, right? So 2645. Right now, um, we're currently at uh, 2560, so about $80 away. Uh, or so from uh, making a new all-time high on Ethereum. We are touching the Bollinger Bands here, but if we did rip up for Ethereum, it could even touch 3,000 at any given time uh, if it decides to go mega bullish. So Ethereum, right, has a lot of good ingredients for it, so don't bet against it. Looking at, you know, compared to its previous all-time high, it seems like on the weekly chart, if we just take this here and go across, you could say, right, it tested the previous place that it came out of once. You could even argue if we bring this up to the wick, something along those lines, you could argue that, right, it's tested that area once, twice, and just kind of continued up from there. So yeah, this uptrend is intact uh, and everything looking positive for Ethereum as well. So hopefully you bought the dip. Ethereum didn't dip all that much, to be honest. If we look at the daily chart on Ethereum, Ethereum's biggest part of the dip was the first part, right? So if you apply the same kind of corrective ABC wave on Ethereum, like an A, B, and C, it's pretty abnormal. So Ethereum's doing its own thing here, not quite the same type of pattern as Bitcoin, whereas here you could see that clear three-wave structure and here as well. So quite a bit different, but basically we're breaking above that previous area here. This was just a wick, so not so much volume. So looks like Ethereum has a good chance to start taking off. And so if Ethereum does, 
What happens to the altcoins and Bitcoin dominance? Well, Bitcoin dominance has still five and a half days before closing, but right if it did close below this trend line, or especially cl if it closed below 50% dominance, right? Meaning more money would be in the altcoins than in Bitcoin. If Bitcoin or if the Bitcoin dominance chart has the ability to do that, breaking below 50%, let's say the week closed at maybe 49.5%, watch out in the coming weeks. That could mean May is massive altcoin season. Not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying it is very, very possible, right? So uh, watch for that uh, area at the end of this week and see where uh, that may close. So far, um, though, right? Uh, nothing to write home about, but the alts are doing just fine. So that's what's going on here. Um, so let's get into the subject today. Uh, let's go. What do we got going here? What's do, do, do. Blaine Wales says still go into uni or is it too late? Yeah, it's fine. Actually, let's take before we jump into the subject, let's take a look at the chat and then we'll jump into the subject real quick. Um, do, 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 where was that comment? So Blaine Wells saying still uni or too late. Nope, definitely not too late. I believe Uniswap in terms of its price right now is just under $40. So yeah, it's still a great buy. Still a fantastic buy. No problem. <laughs> Spark 55 getting all uppity with the newbies in the chat saying, I don't like the sentiment people asking the most normie and DJ questions ever in the chat. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, if you think if you think sentiment is wild for the altcoins right now, trust me, bro. At the end of this bull market, it gets wild. It gets wild if you haven't experienced it before. Usually does not happen. Usually does not happen. But there are oddities every once in a while. Nothing is impossible. Yes, sir. It is. Where is that? Oh, I missed it. Da, da, da. Oh, I missed the comment I wanted to highlight. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to ban you from the chat, John. <laughs> joking, joking. Um, let's see. All right. Jimmy him watching out for that Gary V pumpy pump of mentals on, on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo should be good. Exactly. There's a chance. All right. We'll keep going. Oh, we got a super chat jumping in the house. There we go. Michael Milo uh, says is wink a scam coin potentially, potentially. Smash that like button and hit the subscribe button and as well. We got 204 people watching, 96 people in the chat. I would say, get this, the number of people watching right now, usually there's about like 250 or 300 people uh, watching live often, right? I would say the number of people right now in the chat who are watching this show live, to me, is a very good sentiment indicator that we're probably pretty bullish because when there's a bit of fear in the streets, people start to ignore what's happening in cryptocurrency after it's already been very, very bullish for a long time, usually a good time um, to be buying. But yeah, wink coin, probably scam. I don't know. I haven't looked enough into it, but not really something I'm interested in either. But um, Raymond Drake with the $5 super chat says gas fees seem to be going down fast. Yes. There's a good time to do stuff on Uniswap this weekend. Is this the Berlin fork su succeeding and driving the price of ETH up? I'm thinking good time to get more sell. Um, potentially. Yeah. It, because that was the purpose of the, the Berlin fork. So uh, to reduce the gas fees and to reduce fees in general for Ethereum. So I would say, yeah, it's definitely a good time to be going and getting more uh, sell there and, and doing whatever you need to do on Uniswap, well, the fees are decently low. Mo being a good dip buyer over the weekend. Good, good to hear. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it. Got to, got to like that movie. One of the best movies ever. All right. So that is what it is. Let's go into the, uh, Let's focus on 
the subject of today. Before we look at the subject of JP Morgan buying potentially and Tesla selling, one thing I, I did want to mention was this chart here, which uh, is interesting. Very, very interesting. So we all know that the people paying attention right now, the 212 people paying attention to this show, the 212 winners who have the potential to change their lives massively, not only with cryptocurrency, but with digital uh, understanding di digital finances and just the digital uh, economy in general, right? Look at how damn early we are, we are compared to other innovations. And some of these are actual technologies. Some of them are larger innovations, but I mean, think about like the automobile, the computer, um, those types of things, you know, bigger innovations. I mean, the flush toilet, I mean, pretty big innovation, right? <laughs> you gotta have it, um, especially the ones that self clean. But anyways, um, you know, a lot of these technologies go parabolic and Bitcoin uh, or cryptocurrency in general, still in, in terms of shares of US households using this technology is very, very, very low at the moment. So starting to get its parabolic rise, but um, only up on this chart, I think only up from here. So going to be wild to see that take off. Um, so let's talk about it, right? Which we want to talk about first, JP Morgan or Tesla? I'll go with JP Morgan just because they are the antithesis of everything that is crypto. So it is all good. Um, JP Morgan to let clients invest in Bitcoin fund for the first time, according to sources. Right. So they're not investing directly necessarily, but they're letting clients invest. So uh, let's take a look at this and understand the details slightly. So the JP Morgan Bitcoin fund could roll out as soon as this summer, sources tell Coindesk. Uh, NYDIG uh, will be the fund's custody provider, right? And these guys uh, were um, at the Michael Saylor pitch to corporations in February, um, telling corporations how they can invest in cryptocurrency. So um, pretty big uh, custody provider. But let's take a quick look at this. Um, they'll, they'll go through the history, but generally most of the information is at the top. <laughs> P. Willie in the house with the 499 Super Chat says, I'm in it for the tech. <laughs> in it for the gains, baby. In it for the gains. <laughs> oh. Anyways, uh, JP Morgan is preparing to offer an actively managed Bitcoin fund. Uh, to certain clients, right? To certain clients. So becoming the latest and greatest and unlikeliest US mega bank to embrace crypto as an asset class, right? Because they are well documented for their distaste uh, for Jamie Dimon's distaste of crypto in general, right? So the JP Morgan Bitcoin fund could roll out as soon as this summer. Two sources familiar with the matter told Coindesk institutional Bitcoin uh, shop NYDIG will serve as their custody provider. So what's, God damn it, are they just repeating the same information that's in the title? JP Morgan's Bitcoin fund will act be actively uh, managed. Multiple sources told Coindesk that's a notable break from the passive fare offered by crypto industry stalwarts, stalwarts like Pantera Capital and Galaxy Digital, uh, which let well-heeled clients buy and hold Bitcoin funds uh, without ever touching it themselves. So not crazy huge, but you know, definitely a step in the right direction. So going back to uh, JP Morgan's slow, but or Jamie Dimon's and JP Morgan's slow, but sure, um, you know, forced movement into cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular, right? It's just one more headline along the way. So it's bullish for Bitcoin, but, um, you know, Manipulators extraordinaire is what you know. You should be calling J.P. Morgan. We understand that these guys they like to try to manipulate the price of uh, gold, right, and silver and other uh, items as well. So, of course, going to try to get their hand in that Bitcoin pot. Um, we'll see how successful or unsuccessful they are. But as Zotrack mentioned before, they are the dumb money, right? J.P. Morgan specifically. Um, so we'll see what their clients do. Maybe uh, we'll see if that's a little different. <laughs> Tom Grab says, sounds like Jamie Dimon stopped returning Dan Pena's phone calls. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right. Next one. Um, so Tesla sold their Bitcoin, right? So we're talking about 
a lot of people out there were saying uh, earlier today that Elon Musk sold his Bitcoin. It wasn't Elon Musk selling his Bitcoin. It was Tesla, right? So is that bearish or bullish? Because we have the guys who are totally against Bitcoin, or at least have been historically, now allowing their clients to buy it. Now we have uh, Tesla and uh, therefore Elon Musk selling some of their Bitcoin, right? For uh, $272 million. So he bought a $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin in February, now selling uh, two, uh, basically a quarter billion dollars uh, in proceeds. So uh, basically you have to listen here to what the, their company speak is. Uh, but basically year over year, positive impacts from volume, growth, sorry, volume growth, regulatory credit revenue growth, gross margin improvement driven by further production, uh, product cost reductions, and the sale of Bitcoin, right, uh, were mainly offset by lower uh, ASP and increased SBC, additional supply chain costs, R&D investments, and other items, right, the Tesla's Model S and Model X, uh, changeover costs negatively impacted both their gross profit as well as their R&D expense, so uh, making these changeovers to those models was expensive for them. But in the midst of that, Bitcoin's a little bright spot on their balance sheet because uh, $101 million was the positive net impact, uh, even though they had had gains of $272 million, right? So good for the company um, to uh, show that, you know, they can make some gains with Bitcoin and it's not uh, something that they're stuck in forever, right? They can sell it when they want to. Now, for me, what this says, and it just reaffirms what I've been saying for a long time, one of the things that I have been saying for quite a long time is that the narrative of everybody saying, well, because institutions and large corporations will be jumping into Bitcoin, they're going to be in it for the long term. They're not going to sell. They're going to have uh, diamond hands you know, stronger than the rest of us. I disagree, or I have disagreed with that for months, simply because I believe these corporations and these larger institutions, yes, they intend to be in it for a longer period of time. They're not going to sell all of it, but they will be taking their profits. They will be using leverage, um, which will increase the volatility of uh, things here. So generally speaking, I would say um, they're just like the rest of us. Like Zotrek said before, JP Morgan is dumb money <laughs> and Tesla, right? is doing it right, right? They're not selling everything, but they're taking some profits to prove to their investors that they have uh, liquidity. So um, basically, uh, Kierkorn, who is their CFO, Zach Kierkorn, he said, there aren't many traditional opportunities to do this, right? To make uh, this type of money for their balance sheet, or at least that we found, particularly with yields being so low for other assets and without taking an on additional risk or sacrificing liquidity. Um, uh, so let's see. So while other companies continue to deal with the global supply chain crunches, like semiconductor shortages, um, he said, Bitcoin market is liquid with an optimistic future, right? So they're able to have more liquidity, more money flow, more profits, um, if they're involved with Bitcoin. So it's better. Basically what they're trying to prove here is that it's better for them to have some transactions and some, uh, movement of their dollar value through cryptocurrency, through Bitcoin in particular, rather than not, um, is what this is mainly saying. So we go over to what did Elon have to say? And right, he's trying to dispel the rumor here that he did not sell his cryptocurrency. And I believe I'll go back to once we're finished with this topic, we'll jump over and go back to, I believe one, uh, I don't know if we can go back to it. Actually, let me mention it now. I think I can scroll all the way back up because I'm not going to be able to show the actual comment, I think. Um, but who was it? It was, no, oh, it doesn't go all the way back. I think there's somebody in the chat who had a pretty good take on it that I wanted to mention here, but I can't see it in the chat. Oh, well, it is what it is. Anyways. So he said, I've not sold any of my Bitcoin, right? Uh, Tesla may have realized some of his Bitcoin profits, but Elon Musk continues to hodl his personal Bitcoin, apparently. So he hasn't sold any of his personal stash, right? And uh, good old Dave Portnoy jumping in the mix saying, so am I understanding this correctly? Elon Musk buys Bitcoin, then he pumps it uh, via Doge uh, or just pumps the market in general. It goes up, then he dumps it and makes a fortune. Listen, I own one Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is exactly who we thought it was. They're exactly who they thought we were. <laughs> good old Denny Green. 
Just don't be one, the last one holding the bag, right? So it's pump and dump, guys. Get out, make your money. Dave Portnoy, he clearly understands Bitcoin when he sold his Bitcoin back down at, I believe it was about $11,000. So he bought back the one Bitcoin that he does own much, much higher. I would say, Dave Portnoy, sorry, buddy. Not going to be listening to you on Vice about Bitcoin. But Elon Musk says, no, you do not understand me correctly. I have not sold any of my Bitcoin. Tesla sold 10% of its holdings essentially to prove liquidity of Bitcoin as an alternative to holding cash on the balance sheet. So we're proving to uh, the board, proving to their investors that they are responsible, fiscally responsible, and Bitcoin will do them well. So it's actually uh, a positive thing here. Uh, it's not a pump and dump, right? So that's pretty much the main gist of everything here. So, right, it's it's something that I think is uh, important to note, but, um, like the guys in the chat who have taken the crypto mindset course said, somebody is like Elon Musk is laddering out, right? It's just taking 10% profit this month. Don't worry. Maybe he thinks there's 12 months le left in this bull market. He'll take 10% next month, maybe in 10% the next for Tesla by the end of the bull market, Tesla has made a killing, right? Maybe they went from $1.5 billion, uh, when Bitcoin or, you know, from cash to Bitcoin, and then maybe at the end of the bull market, you know, um, maybe they have like five, six, $7 billion from that play, right? Adding more liquidity, or maybe they hold some Bitcoin forever under Tesla, who knows, but uh, interesting there, right? Trying to not shake the shareholders, but uh, let's see here. Good stuff here. So we'll take a look at that super chat in a second. Um, so let's, that's a good time to go over. So we'll be talking about other bullish news that's happening in crypto this week. Um, so let's take a look at the super chat. Let's take a look at the chat in general. <laughs> the East West Connection says, did he, did he sell or not? I'm confused. He did not. Tesla did. So technically he did not. That is the gist. <laughs> They probably do. They probably do. They were probably buy buying in 2017 when they were shit talking it, you know? Probably been buying that stuff for quite a while. Let's see. Mr. Varga with the 10 euro super chat says when a token is initially listed, whether a private sale, uh, centralized exchange, decentralized exchange, what determines its opening price? Is it arbitrary? I'm asking because certain coins seem way overvalued right off the bat. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. Um, I would say there's some coins which are arbitrary. Let's take Polkadot as an example, right? So Polkadot, they did an interesting way to launch their coin. Um, what, they, what they did was they said, uh, we're building this project, but there's not an official coin out yet. Instead, what came out was a kind of IOU coin. So it wasn't actually minted, right? As um, like, this is actual Polkadot. This is like, this is a placeholder coin. We're just putting this here so that you guys can, can like maybe think about it, right? And that coin was speculated up to about 300 and some dollars um, before August of last year. Then in August, the middle of August in tw uh, 2020, Polkadot says, we're going to make the official coin. It's going to be out get rid of that uh, placeholder basically because it's not the real polka dot uh, or you might be able to exchange some of it and hey, we're going to come out with the new coin, right? And so what they did to uh, look at the initial value was they just basically lopped off two zeros. It was about 300 and some dollars. When they lopped off those two zeros, it came out around $3, right? So it was the same price as what had been speculated on before it came out, um, but then it came out. So each coin I would say has a totally different kind of history before they come out where they list. If they're doing like a pre-sale, right? That pre-sale um, can affect um, where the price comes out. But then undoubtedly, whenever you get a price that comes out, you usually see a pump and then a dump kind of similar to stock, right? And what that is, is uh, before when they come out, they say, hey, everybody get ready to purchase at this time. We're going to list it at a, maybe sometimes an arbitrary price and say, hey, we're going to list it at $1 when it comes out. So buy it up. Right. And sometimes it, it's based on the tokenomics of the coin, like how much supply do they have? How much do they want it valued at right away? And but when it comes out, 
and everybody's ready to buy if they don't already have a pre-sale, right? If they just like, hey, we're going to release all these tokens at once, and then you have to go and grab them on the open market. There's bots as well, which try to buy them. That does increase the price. And when that happens, um, then they undoubtedly doubt, dump as well. So there's some you know bots that do that very quickly to try to take advantage of the hype. But everybody knows that that doesn't last too long. So you got to be careful with that. That's why, particularly, I don't tend to get into coins right off the bat. Unless I have specific information telling me uh, that, you know, I know the people involved with the project. If I get like really, really close to it and I really know the information to a T, I would be interested, but not generally. Uh, but very, very good question. An interesting discussion. Mm -mm. Let's see. <laughs> Ralph, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Buy up Elon and Tesla's bags and uh, make sure that Bitcoin doesn't st stick to only uh, the rich, right? We can we can get it too. Yeah, without social media, I think this market would uh, have a hard time uh, really gaining steam, right? The digital economy deserves uh, digital communication platforms. But yeah, um, let's see here. Uh, BJ Tuckworth, $5 suit chat says I've bad case of paralysis by analysis and lizard shoes <laughs> with the good old Ric Flair. Woo. I like it. Um, yeah, man, I was, I was recommending dot between three to $6 for months, months told you guys it was like buying Ethereum under $10 who believed me who bought it. I don't know. All right. All right, let's jump into um, what's going on, though, in other news in crypto. So I told you guys, right, Elon Musk, JP Morgan, lots of bullish news. But then I also said, right, the NFL, right, the uh, NFL draft coming up later this week is also somehow involved in cryptocurrency. Let's see how. A couple ways, right? Just players in general uh, asking to be paid in Bitcoin. Right. So here, um, appreciate you, MLD. So smash the like. We need 50% viewer, uh, like to viewer like ratio. We have 246 people watching, right? 150 likes. Uh, so we're getting there. Um, but um, uh, the Chiefs tight end, uh, who have never heard of before, Sean Culkin, I think he's maybe second string, to convert his entire NFL salary into Bitcoin. So this is one of the first major. Uh, one of the first players in a major sport to accept their entire salary in Bitcoin. There are, have been some uh, like Russell Okung who have been uh, able to receive some of their salary in Bitcoin, but this guy's going to receive all of his salary, right? $920,000 per year is what he makes on his base salary. And <laughs> this is awesome. He says uh, he, he wants to use Zap's strike to take his entire base salary of uh, $920,000. And what Culkin said was, the hardest form of currency. What a G. I love it. Um, let's see here. All right. This is for him, generational wealth, a way for him to take his money that he's getting from the NFL and making it, um, you know, a, a generational wealth building uh, scenario for him. Right. And we mentioned before, right, Russell Okun, who famously followed through on his declaration, pay me in Bitcoin, took, uh, still takes half of his $13 million salary. Uh, in fiat. So that also means he takes half in Bitcoin, so six and a half million dollars in Bitcoin. Right? Pretty good chunk of change there as well. I uh, wonder if he's aping into anything, uh, any, into any shit coins or if uh, Sean Culkin will as well. I don't know. I'm probably pretty sure they're both probably pretty fiscally responsible um, at this moment in time with that much money in Bitcoin. But you never know. Maybe they're going to jump and buy some sell as well because sell is a good buy. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting there. But also even more interesting, right? We got uh, Trevor Lawrence getting a crypto endorsement deal with Blockfolio. Um, pretty big, seeing as he's the number one draft prospect. He's going to be drafted number one uh, uh, during the NFL draft. So he's going to be one of the biggest players probably over the next five years in the NFL, America's most popular sport, where millions and millions of people watch. And he's going to be endorsed by Blockfolio. So pretty good snag on their part. Wonder how much they had to pay him. Apparently it was undisclosed. So I'm pretty sure they paid him a good amount of change. But 
Um, who's behind this, right? Our friend Sam Bankman Fried, the CEO of Blockfolio, uh, sorry, of their parent company, FTX. So, Sam, right, running Solana, running Serum, running FTX, running Almeida Capital, right, and, uh, and plenty of other projects. Um, you know, 28 year old kid worth over $10 billion um, buying the naming rights for the Miami Heat Stadium. Now, on the week of the NFL draft, when Bitcoin's at a good price, good time to pump the uh, the crypto bags and why not pay Trevor Lawrence uh, a, a ton of money uh, as well uh, to uh, get uh, a lot of recognition or uh, attention during the NFL draft. Pretty genius. Um, will be interesting uh, to look at. So let's take a look at what else is bullish here. Um, probably something just to take note of in general, right? Today, is, uh, today marks the 10-year anniversary of Satoshi Nakamoto's final message Right, so April 26, 2011, right? We're on April 27th, but yesterday's news, not so not so bad. Basically, was the last time we ever heard uh, from Satoshi Nakamoto through, via um, uh, either a blog or email. So he's been gone for 10 years. Bitcoin's stronger than ever. Yep, I think it's pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Oh, these quotes are okay. I wanted to see Satoshi's quote because I was reading it before. Basically, the quote or whatever in his email, Satoshi wrote something along the lines of, um, yeah, you know, I'm going to separate from the project. It's in good hands of Gavin Andreessen and other people. And oh, yeah, by the way, I'm just going to move on to other projects. So uh, somebody just comes in, changes uh, the entire idea of what is money, brings us into a digital uh, economy uh, fully and just says, yeah, you know, after about two years of doing this, I'm just going to move on to something else. <laughs> you know, it changes the entire uh, trajectory of human history. And uh, in my opinion, and, uh, you know, just kind of dips out and starts something new. Pretty, pretty, pretty badass. Um, but again, talking about serum, right? Just because we we're talking about this on Moon Gang, good time to follow up during Moon Gang. Let's take a look at serum's price just because it's been pumping pretty good. We were talking about this during Moon Gang on Sunday evening. Right. And on Moon Gang on Sunday evening, uh, Serum was just testing this previous high. Right. And we mentioned good time to buy it, something I was pretty bullish on. And the to the high, it was a, about a 40% increase since the end of Moon Gang on Sunday night, American time, and currently still up 25 over 25%. That's over about a day and a half or two days. Right. So, definitely pays to pay attention during the moon gang. And most importantly, going and making sure you take that action if it's something that you're interested in, right? We give you some of the information to start researching on and then, right, you have to go and take that action. Um, but definitely still a good place to buy this coin. Not saying you have to go out and buy it. I'm just saying, uh, hashtag not financial advice, but very interesting project doing pretty well. I'll put this article in the uh, chat because I think don't look at the all the charts and price structure, but some good information here, right? Like for example, uh, from Serum itself, they're talking about 65K of unique visitors to Bonafide, which is their most used Serum DEX front end in the last 24 hours. So people are interested in Serum. Uh, and so if you wanna learn more about it, feel free to read that article among others. It's in the chat there. Yeah, I think Adam back is a pretty good chance uh, of being Satoshi if uh, making proof of work, but um, plenty of others in the running as well. Let's see. <laughs> John, smash the like, you leeches. You make me sick. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, good times. Um, last two things before we head out here, right? Uh, we'll talk about this later in the week. Um, Biden's proposed capital gains tax rise uh, will only hit only the richest 0.3%, but that's where I'm aiming to be. So <laughs> don't tax it. Um, just generally speaking, uh, right? They they only they want to make it sound like increasing taxes will be helpful and the government will be wise enough to spend uh, the money correctly, which they most likely or almost 99.9% .9 guaranteed that they will not be able to spend that money regularly. So it's kind of like giving somebody who has a you know addiction to shopping uh, on clearly the wrong things, um, decide you know deciding to raise the taxes to give them more money in the hopes that they will spend that 
also correctly. So the U.S. has a you know problem with their finances, and to trust the politicians to actually spend it better um, doesn't make any sense. And trying to say that oh, don't worry, it's only going to affect you know the the top 0.3 percent. You'll never get there, or you'll never have the chance to. Um, isn't quite the best way to look at it, in my opinion, but we'll talk about that more on another show. Yes, the silver bishop in the house says, make governments small again worldwide. I would agree um, with that, especially when it comes to economics. Um, Demand for PayPal's crypto offerings exceed all expectations, say their CEO. That is bullish. Uh, in the next five to 10 years, there will be more changes in the financial system than over the past two decades, according to PayPal CEO. Right. So he's predicting this. So the interesting thing about this headline, uh, and I'd also recommend reading this article, is think about the last um, 20 years, what has changed. Right. PayPal, right, came out around uh, probably around 97, 98, right. Uh, and basically, it was birthed by what was happening over on eBay. Uh, if you go and watch uh, use some YouTube videos on the PayPal mafia, pretty interesting uh, listening to how that company was created. And it has, PayPal has changed. Uh, you know, the digital economy and how people move money globally, uh, also with Venmo, which they own. But he's saying, right, over the last 20 years, the next 10 years will be a more significant change to the financial system. And obviously, cryptocurrency is the thing that they're mainly getting involved in in that change. So basically, just to put it in plain English, PayPal is basically saying crypto will change the financial system in the next 10 years more than we've seen the financial system change in the last 20 years. Another change which we've seen in the financial system over the last 20 years is how people trade, how people invest. And the one thing we saw, right, in let's say the 90s, right, is you used to have to call up a broker on a phone uh, and say, hey, I want to buy X amount of stock. You had to probably buy at least a few thousand dollars worth of that stock. Uh, wasn't for your everyday investor. Now you can trade cryptocurrency from the from your toilet, from your bathtub, from your bed, from your computer, from the mountaintop, wherever you may be, um, you can trade your cryptocurrency. And right, so this is just a start. Crypto has barely been in existence um, for a, a long period of time and is still kicking the traditional system's ass. Um, buy it, understand it, hashtag not financial advice. But um, it's pretty interesting to see, you know, when somebody who you know, has been paying attention. They used the PayPal's CEO. I'm not sure if it's the same guy or an ex CEO basically used to say Bitcoin is going nowhere. Now they've turned face because they can finally notice that crypto um, is here to stay and they can't change that. So they might as well get on board and get with the game because there's plenty of money to be made. <laughs> B. Willie does says, sell me this bed. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, hopefully the only one request for well two requests for paypal one request right for catching up for the modern times allow us to take our cryptocurrency from paypal and send it via um you know a public address to coinbase to uh, another exchange to my cold storage i want to be able to take my money off of there and use it freely that's my probably number one request for paypal my number two request um up your game on customer service man they stink um, generally, and there's a few good people in there that help out, but generally speaking, man, it's a pulling teeth in that place. Um, oh yeah, got your super chat. Uh, I want to take a look at that. It was on another screen when you put it on, I saw it, you put it in there. Let's go back and take a look. Um, so with the, I'm guessing Hong Kong dollars, 200, uh, saying, uh, East West Connections, uh, Victor saying, I will, uh, will I become a multimillionaire by the end of 2021? My bags only dot and sell currently around 450K. So it depends on how much sell and how much dot, but let's, let's just say you average a 15X gain on that 450K. Does that make you a millionaire or does that make you a multimillionaire, Victor? Good times ahead. Good times ahead. When are we partying? Sounds like a good time. Let's go. Um, so we'll get MLD on that. Um, but yeah, lots of good gains to be had. And um, Victor, man, he's a man of action. He does everything uh, right the right way. And I think it's important to view this as this is the power of just paying attention to good information out here on a free cryptocurrency stream. We have 259 people watching right now, only 177 likes. And we've literally minted millionaires out here, right? It's not just uh, something that we say. It is something that we do. 
And um, yes, Jimmy, uh, this is, you know, uh, we give good information and then we get guys like Victor who actually take action on that. And then boom, they take action early enough in a bull market. And, you know, they're going to, he's going to have a very Merry Christmas uh, and New Year's as well. So it, it's pretty cool to see that uh, just, you know, to every average Joe out there. <laughs> I'll highlight this. I don't think I'll, I don't know if I will, uh, if I will, uh, be banned on YouTube for this, but, uh, I, I would agree. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Pretty funny. I appreciate it. MLD. Um, but yeah, just generally speaking for some people in this bull market, right. They can make a good amount of change still in this bull market. But also if you pay attention, truly what's happening with cryptocurrency now over this entire decade, not just when we're bullish, but also when we have a downtrend like we had over the weekend, did you go away and did you stop paying attention to crypto? Did you not purchase it on the dip? Did you not really try to figure it out so that you could get a good discount? Because probably at 64,000, you were buying Bitcoin or buying uh, Ethereum at the all time highs. And you were like, oh my gosh, uni is so high right now. I don't think I can buy in. And then you got a chance to buy uni at 30 bucks. Did you buy it? Right. Uh, you just have to do it. You just have to do it. And uh, <laughs> John coming back. Uh, yes, yes, we uh, we do appreciate as well. So um, lots of good gains still left in this bull market. We are bullish. Things looking good. Bitcoin to end the show um, is currently at fifty five thousand dollars. So do, doing just fine. Uh, Ethereum at twenty five sixty one. Everything is good. Head over to MLD's channel, Modern Life Dating. He has a good uh, bit of information there and a good infotainment as well uh, coming up that will make gains in your lifestyle and your life in general. So be sure to support him. Jump over there, smash that like button to start the stream. Um, make sure to have a good day as well, guys. And we'll catch you here tomorrow um, with me and John on the Tokyo Crypto Show at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so until then, guys, peace, live long and prosper. Check you guys all again very soon.